Hi, I am Gabrielle and welcome to my channel. Today, I want to be talking to you guys about removing keloids for good. But first, this content, graphic, images, and information obtained from this channel are for informational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek for the advice of a physician or other qualified health providers with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. So I am very excited to share to you guys my journey on removing my keloid from my ear completely. It's gone, it's not coming back, at least I hope. I'm gonna walk you through day by day what I did to get rid of my keloid. With this process, it took about six days to completely get up the keloid this doesn't have anything to do with the healing process. This is only about how I got rid of my keloid. So starting day one. First, I have seen other videos on YouTube with other people telling me how much the pain persists throughout the whole entire process. Now, I didn't know that the pain would be that bad, but the pain was extreme to the point where I had to take medication. So through this process, just know that I took medication, not day one, not day two, but day three is when I said I couldn't take it anymore. The only thing that I've seen was whenever I put the rubber band on my ear that it changed color not purple not red but white i don't know i'll show you pictures here it was white um i got no sleep whatsoever and the pain was extreme I, there's nothing else i can say about it the pain was unbelievably painful okay now I'm going to show to you guys a picture of the actual rubber band that I use the little black rubber bands that you can get at a 99 cent store or Walmart it's a very tiny black rubber band I only wrapped it around my ear twice only twice it'll be really impossible for me to wrap it around three times or even more than three for the simple fact that the rubber band is just too small. How I got the rubber band onto my keloid. I didn't just wrap it around twice on my ear. No, I already had it wrapped twice on my finger and I slipped it on that way. I'm gonna show it to you guys maybe in this video, maybe in another video, of how I actually put on the rubber band onto my keloid. Only thing that I could say about day one was no sleep due to me being in pain. Um, and the color was white. My keloid turned white. I guess for so much pressure, my blood circulation is starting to cut off. So I guess that's what's caused the white color. Day two, I'm thinking to myself, this, it, I'm regretting this completely. Like, I don't know if I can go through with this. I don't know if I just made a big mistake. All I knew is it was on and it was no turning back at that point. It's like, if I take it off, I already irritated it to the point where if everyone Everyone who has a keloid, they knows that if you mess with your keloid, you touch it, you itch it, you bother it, it's going to grow. You have to leave it alone completely. So for the simple fact that I put a rubber band on it, which irritated it, it was going to grow. So I'm like, whatever, like, I just got to go with the, I just got to go with the process. There was nothing much I could do about it. Did I want to give up? Yes, I wanted to give up so bad, but I didn't. I stuck through with it. I told myself, this is what I put myself into. I just gotta go with the process and that's it. 
Now day three. I finally said, you know what? I can't take it. I need some type of medicine. I went to Walgreens and got the extra strength Tylenol. It did not work whatsoever. Just that simple. It didn't work. I had to call my aunt. I know that she has pain medicine. I asked her if I can use her Tylenol 800 and she gave me, I'll say about six or seven pills and I was using those things like, I was using it and I was like holding on to them because I knew that I only had six or seven and I didn't know how long the pain was gonna last me. So I was very mindful on how I took my pills. So I would usually just take my Tylenol 800 at night because that's when I needed it the most. During the day when I'm running around with my toddler, I can deal, I can deal with it. But at night, I need my sleep. I know she's gonna be up running around. I gotta chase her. I'm exhausted, I'm in pain, I'm irritated. I needed it. I needed the pills, period. So, no real, um, no real difference in day three. I did start to see that it was changing color. It was becoming, darker in color it wasn't so it wasn't purple or blue but it was turning darker than day one okay day three i knew that really soon that the rubber band will break through i just knew it i kept looking at it i kept taking pictures of it and i kept looking at the process making sure everything was good i didn't clean it i didn't touch it i just left it alone but i was obsessed with taking pictures just to see what was going on so as you guys can see i'm going to show you many pictures on the day that i took it i took about maybe 20 pictures i may not show you all of them but i will show you pictures now day four that's when the rubber band finally broke through now what i mean by breakthrough is that actual rubber band was squeezing so tight onto my keloid that it broke through my skin and I could actually see blood I actually seen a lot of pus I didn't clean it with any peroxide or any type of um, not even water I didn't even use water I didn't clean it at all the only thing that I did was grab a q-tip and I cleaned around my ear I cleaned all the blood off dry of course I didn't use, I didn't wet it like I said very dry q-tip and I just cleaned the blood off like that and I left it alone. I was afraid that it may have gotten an infection but I was going to take my chances because I knew that if I wet the q-tip and I put it onto my ear it's going to get the rubber band moist and that's going to also cause infection even more so I didn't want to cause any type of complications so I just kept it dry as possible as I can. Now day five. Day five, I realized I didn't have any more pain. The only pain that I had was from the actual breakthrough of my skin. But the pressure pain was no longer there. So I realized that I need to either one, put on another rubber band, or two, wrap a string around or tie a string around which I just wrapped the string around. I got the string and I literally just wrapped the string around my ear up until I couldn't wrap the string anymore, as tight as I could. That way I can feel that there's more pressure being put on to my keloid, that way that it can come off completely. So day six. Day six is when I finally said, you know what? Let me just see what's going on with my ear. Let me unravel the string and let me see what's actually going on and maybe try to clean it a little bit with some type of peroxide. So as I was trying to take off the string, I realized I couldn't because the blood dried up so, so much to where I couldn't pull on the string. So I had to 
pour peroxide onto my ear, onto the string, in order to loosen up the string. That way I can unravel it. That's what I did. Then I realized, okay, I guess the process is over with because my keloid is only dangling by a little string. Like it was barely on. I'll show you guys pictures as you can see. It was barely hanging on and that was it. So I just went into the bathroom. Um, I'm not sure if I took a video of the actual part where I took some scissors from the first aid kit. If you know the first aid kit, they have the little small silver scissors that you can use. I use those to just clip the little skin off and I didn't feel nothing at all. I felt nothing whatsoever. The skin was just dead. Whatever was dangling on was dead. So I just clipped it and it was gone. I have pictures of my process of healing because that's just a whole nother process. It's one, getting rid of it, and two, actually taking care of your keloid after it's gone because you guys already know that if you have an open sore and if you have the skin that forms keloids, you have to take care of your wounds or they will turn into keloids. We just happen to be the lucky ones, right? I guess so. So I went through the whole process of taking care of it. That'll be another video that I can show you guys. I'll show you a process of me and how I kept up with the process and how I cleaned my healing wound from removing my keloids. Now, um, if you guys have any questions or if you want me to do more videos explaining exactly what I did, just comment down below. I will be looking into all of my comments. Um, this is what I wanted. I wanted someone to talk about this so I can ask questions like, what did you do? How did you do? I, this is what I needed. So I figured, now I'm not saying go out and do it because that's not what I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is I did it. And if you have done it before, if you've seen other videos and you felt, hey, I want to do it. Hey, that's on you. Ain't got nothing to do with me. I tried it at my own risk. And that's that. I'm gonna leave this with a bye. Give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see. Thank you.